Open your ears and crack some beers. You are listening to episode 21 of Retro Hangover. We are coming over the make-believe Wi-Fi waves to the device of your choice today, whether that be your phone or computer or whatever you're using today. It's me. I'm your co-host today. I'm Chris Copeland. And today, we will be giving you a daily dose of destructive diatribe, describing detailed delicious disco takes, denying divisive discussion, duly doubling down. Here's your double dragon dude, Shane Kosky. I feel like I need to, I'm going to have to edit in some, some like applause or something, uh, in post on that one. That that's pretty good. I like the alliteration. You, you, you continue to impress me. I, I, I thought that last week the energy wasn't quite there and I think I need to, I need to amp it up because, uh, we sound way too similar when I, we're just <laughs> talking normally. And, and I, I was talking to a friend about this podcast and I said, he kept on saying the things that you were saying were the things I was saying I had to keep on correcting. It was like, no, man, I was talking about Castlevania. Shane was talking about Silent Hill. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm like, so I, I, I gotta, I gotta maybe raise my voice pitch a little bit, but hopefully not too much and get that sultry radio experience. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, and you know, the, the energy is warranted considering we are, uh, talking on this episode about the, the venerable doom. Mm. Which, if that doesn't get your adrenaline going, then I think you might already be dead. You might want to check into that. I, I'm one of I'm one of the demons. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, I'll be over at your house shortly. Okay. By yeah. the way, this episode is old enough to drink. Well, I mean, not in terms of age, but in terms of numbers, this is episode 21. That's so right. We we can officially say we're getting drunk, but I'm not getting drunk today because I have a hockey game to go to. <laughs> Actually, we're we're both going. As a matter of fact, not not together, but separately. But I'm sure we'll end up seeing each other there. Yeah, it's a complete coincidence. Actually, I, I got yeah. tickets, and you're a season ticket holder. So, yeah, man, I'm super stoked. the uh, The hockey season is starting again. It's like the one sport I actually care about. So, mm-hmm. I uh, uh we uh the the girlfriend and I went over to Spirit Halloween last weekend and ended up spending far too much money because Halloween is basically my favorite holiday and. Uh, I ended up getting a really sweet ass uh, Jason Voorhees hockey jersey, so I will be wearing that to the game tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be wearing my Blackhawks jersey or my Atari jersey, but whatever one I'm not wearing, I'm going to make my kid wear. Uh, well, my vote is for Atari. Okay, but you know, take that however you will. How about my North Star jersey? Would you? How about that? Ooh, actually, that would be good. You get, you know, that's like that's like hockey hipster. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll be getting asked a lot of questions that I don't know anymore because I really haven't been paying attention to hockey since they went on strike for like the third or fourth time 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, I remember it, that. It was like a whole season of just no hockey. That sucked. Yeah, it, it dropped off for me big time and I, I just haven't caught up with it since. So, Yeah, that's fair. I think that happened for a lot of people. But yeah. um, so uh, so how you been, Chris? What you, what you been up to? Any Any good gaming going on? Well, um, yes, I beat the game of Persona 5, but I'm an idiot, so I'm going to go back and try to get the Platinum Trophy for it, because, you know, 105 hours wasn't enough, so I need to double down on that. Um, Yeah, no, you know, do nothing if not for, you know, masochism. Of course. And speaking of masochism, I I got a new game. Um, Go on. uh, Maybe I'll bring it up in a future episode, but it's, yeah, I can't believe I, I bought it. But um, maybe if we ever do a Sega Saturn episode, we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm intrigued. I don't, you know, I don't know. I want to know what this is. No, I'm going to keep it a secret from the audience, mostly because I don't want to expose how uh, ridiculous my spending habits were for this game. So I'm mm. going to keep that. I'm going to keep that a secret. In fact, the wife doesn't know. Um, <laughs> thank God she doesn't listen to this episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's like great. All right. And uh, it hurt my back yesterday, so it's hard to walk right now. I don't know what it is. I went, tried to go out for a run and made about half a mile and then just jacked my back up, so I haven't been able to walk around much the past day and a half. Well, that's what you get for trying to exercise. Yes. Exercising is bad. Unless it's your thumbs. Yes. Um, yeah. How about you, man? Uh, how's your gaming going or just life in general? How's everything? 
Uh, uh, busy as usual, but, um, but pretty good. Uh, honestly, the majority of my gaming, well, for a little while now, but especially this past week or so, it's just been a lot of mobile stuff. Um, I'm pretty heavily into, uh, Dissidia, Final Fantasy, Opera Omnia, because, you know, we can't have a Final Fantasy title without it having at least six or eight words in it. Like Fabulous um, Nova Crystallis. Yeah, you know, remix, final ignition, whatever. The it rhythm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I've been I'm heavy into that one, and of course, Kingdom Hearts, uh, Union Cross, that never changes. But mm. uh, and and Record Keeper, still doing the Record Keeper thing, although I'm like super casual on that. Yeah, same here. It's just not as fun now that they have these events and all the dungeons are unlocked right off the gut. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, that, that's most of it. Um, I've been doing a little bit on, on the PC and, and on my Switch. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it on the last episode, but, uh, I've been working through, um, Kingdoms of Amalur on, on PC, uh, which is surprisingly a really good game. It just, um, kind of ended up getting, I guess, a little bit of a bad rap with everything that went down with the, the company that, that made it. Uh, I, I played it before and yeah, because of the Kurt Schilling involvement and his crazy ass and what he, yeah, all the money that they borrowed from the state of Rhode Island and how they almost got shut down that story, but it's a great, it's a good game. It's fun. It is. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting because it, it borrows a lot of like design ethos from MMOs, which is, I feel like that's a, that's a polarizing topic in and of itself of whether or not you like MMO style RPG mechanics or not. Um, but I think it actually does a pretty good job of sort of like fusing that with a more like active battle system. So, so I've been enjoying it. I think I've got about 32 hours into it so far. Only 70 um, hours left. Yeah, pretty much. Well, especially because this one, when I bought it, it came with all of the expansion content too, which adds, I think at least another 20 hours or so. Yeah. And uh, you'll get to the end game and you'll figure out there's, there's a lot of frustrating things at the end game. Because mm. you'll get way overpowered, like you'll, oh, you can I'm, tell. I'm already there. Yeah, okay. that that's actually the one downside of that game uh, is that the difficulty settings, regardless of what you put it on, the game is still incredibly easy. It's mm-hmm. kind of just a a breeze to get through. But. And then you'll get to a point where you can't really change anything or level up anymore, and you just you're playing a game at that point. It just becomes an action game. Yeah, but uh, still a good know, game. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't know, man. I think I probably paid like five or 10 bucks for it on a sale. So I, I figure I'll, I've already gotten my money's worth and mm-hmm. now it, now it's, now it's just gravy. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, so, so what are we, what are we talking about? Chris? I think, I think it's doom. I think it's you doom. Think it's doom? You I think, think it's doom? doom. Yeah. All right. I so think you're right. I think, I think I am right. And we are going to be, well, not we, more specifically, Shane is going to be giving us a brief history of doom. You are a space marine, sent to a top-secret Union Aerospace Corporation teleportation research facility on Mars to waste away as a lowly security guard after assaulting a senior officer over orders to execute innocent civilians. With no action for at least 50 million miles, your days consist of sucking dust and watching restricted flicks in the rec room. That is, until something goes terribly wrong. The denizens of hell begin pouring out of the teleportation gates, slaughtering any personnel that didn't already get turned into mindless zombies. Everyone is gone. Everyone except you. Our discussion of Doom's legacy begins on February 1st, 1991, the day that id Software was founded by four then-members of computer company SoftDisk. John VR is the future, Carmack, John Daikatana Romero, Tom Hall, and Adrian Carmack, who has no relation to John. Originally calling themselves Ideas from the Deep, id Software would almost single-handedly create the first-person shooter genre with the release of the prototypical Wolfenstein 3D in May of 1992. Following Wolfenstein's release, most of the team would begin work on its new expansion, Spear of Destiny. John Carmack, however, focused on developing a brand new 3D game engine. 
While there were ideas tossed around regarding what their next title would be, the team eventually settled on Carmack's own concept. A game about using technology to fight demons. Drawing inspiration from Dungeons and Dragons, Evil Dead 2, and Aliens. The concept had a working title of Green and Pissed, but Carmack ended up dubbing the game Doom, after a line from the film The Color of Money, wherein Tom Cruise describes his pool cue. What you got in there? In here? Doom. The development of Doom began in November of 1992, in a dark office building, the team dubbed Sweet 666, drawing creative inspiration from the sounds of agony coming from the dentist's office next door. The development process of the game was not a smooth one. Rifts in the team caused disagreements over everything from level design to plot. The now famous quote from John Carmack originated from this time period, where he unequivocally stated, Story in a game is like story in a porn movie. It's expected to be there, but it's not that important. Lies. <laughs> These differences resulted in a number of development team lineup changes before the game's release, which came on December 10th, 1993, after several months of extreme crunch where the team often slept in their offices. Because id planned to self-publish the game, they decided to leverage the shareware model of distribution, where they would release the first episode of the game for free. Players would then have the option to purchase the remaining two episodes if they liked what they saw. And, needless to say, they did. The first network the team planned to upload the game to, the University of Wisconsin's FTP network, had so many users connected in anticipation of the release, roughly about 10,000, that it crashed the whole university network. This popularity would continue and expand into every place with a networked PC within hours of Doom's release. Universities banned Doom multiplayer games, which were dubbed death matches by id's own John Romero, who coined the term, and workplace productivity plummeted as everyone was too busy trying to blast their coworkers. By late 1995, Doom was estimated to be installed on more computers than Microsoft's new operating system, Windows 95, a feat that would never be repeated. The fast-paced multiplayer action, coupled with the frenetic single-player gameplay, a soundtrack inspired by heavy metal bands like Metallica, Pantera, and Slayer, and the ability to create custom levels and assets made for one hell of a package. Doom quickly became the must-have application for every game console and personal computer in the years that followed, as well as several expansion packs and alternate versions of the game. Of course, a game notorious for high levels of violence and overt satanic imagery is bound to generate some controversy. It was criticized by religious groups for its demonic undertones and dubbed a mass murder simulator. Perhaps most notably, the game came under fire again in 1999, when it was discovered that Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the boys responsible for the Columbine High School massacre, were avid players. It was rumored that they even went so far as to create custom Doom levels modeled after their school for practice, but this has since been debunked. Despite this negative media attention, Doom would go on to create a legacy and franchise that persists to this day, with two mainline sequels, mobile phone adaptations, novels, comics, a board game, a film adaptation, which we won't talk about, the console ports, which some may say are better than the PC versions. They're not. And the most recent critically acclaimed reboot of the series in 2016, entitled simply Doom. And that is your brief history of Doom. All right. Thanks, Shane. Uh, very, very detailed history of the game Doom. Uh, I'm sure we, I mean, we were definitely alive for it. We remember that vividly. I'm sure you do. I know that this is one of your probably favorite games of all time. You've always is. talked about Doom. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of those ones that I go back to at least at least once a year, but probably more often than that. But um, I've been doing a lot of talking. So, Chris, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about your personal experiences with Doom. So, Doom for me, I, I didn't play it when it first came out. Uh, I was more of a console gamer. Uh, still, heresy. A console game. Yeah, I know. Uh, not part of the PC mas- master race, and part of the console peasant race, but. Uh, so even my P- even my computer that I had back then it was a Mac, so I wouldn't have been able to play Doom anyway. I don't think it came out for Mac for a while, if I remember correctly. Is is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think there was a little bit of time before there was a proper Mac mm-hmm. port. Even if it did, I don't think it would be one of the games that my parents would have got me. I mean, I was more into Mario and and uh, like Donkey Kong Country came out right around that time. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, big into that, you know, Sega, and Sega Super Nintendo, typical console, you know, nine, ten year old kind of stuff that, that you're into. So Doom didn't really grab my attention. Uh, the controversy around Doom definitely grabbed my attention. I think it really in- encapsulated a lot of what was going on with video game culture in the mid nineties. You know, this was before the ESRB was a thing. This was even before, you know, Sega started doing their own ranking system for, rating system for video games back in the early oh, 90s. Fun fact about that, by the way. Mm. Uh, one of the things that I came across when I was doing my research for this episode was, uh, I believe it was the 32X version of Doom was actually the first video game to have a mature rating by the ESRB. Wouldn't shock me. I mean, that was yeah. right, around, right around that time. And if you even go back, I mean, a little bit of a, a di- digression here, but... Um, the ESRB was way more lenient back then with video games, probably, than they mm-hmm. are now in terms of what they rate them. But um, mature would still get mature today. There's no question about it. So, you know, here I am. It's the mid-90s, console gaming. Hadn't played Doom, heard a lot of it. Of course, picked up the Super Nintendo port. And before that, I picked up, you know, the Super Nintendo port and played Wolfenstein 3D. Because if you're a console gamer and you don't play on PC, everything that's going on the PC, you know, gets talked up to a mythological sort of lore for console players back then. At least it did for me. So Doom was the big hot ticket item that everyone wanted to play. So the first, uh, my first experience with Doom was on the Super Nintendo. And looking I'm back, sorry. yeah, uh, wasn't <laughs> that great. Um, but that was one of the key selling points for the 32X. I mean, not a lot of people went out and got a 32X because of Doom. And the 32X port's one of the worst ports of Doom. And by the time you actually started getting good console ports of Doom, I would say that the console gamer's interest had slightly focused off it. Now, I'm not saying completely because Doom 64 was a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doom for the PlayStation, which is the version I played prior to recording this episode, is actually considered to be one of the better console ports of Doom. And I don't think that, I mean, it's a greatest hits, uh, but people didn't really talk about it at all up until probably in the, the past couple of years. In fact, a lot of the talk about the console ports just kind of goes back to the 32X and Super Nintendo versions of it. And f- oddly enough, the, the superior port versions of the game were based off the Atari Jaguar game. Like, that was the original version of the console ports. That was what everything else was based off of, was the Atari Jaguar port. Yeah, I mean, and you're right, like, it... it- I think by the time that the ports kind of caught up to the performance that PC players had had from day one, uh, it, it was less of a big deal, I think. Not a lot of people were talking about it quite as much because, I mean, at that point you had a slew of, of you know, Doom clones that had already come out and the technology had kind of already started to progress past, you know, where that original uh, Doom engine had been. So, so I, I can see that, uh, the unfortunate thing with those early ports, it, because as I said, it was kind of the killer app of its day, but just about every port was inferior in, in almost every way. I mean, the super Nintendo one was egregious in that it had terrible frame rates. Um, it actually had to limit the number of unique monsters in a level, I believe due to memory constraints and, the music was awful because it was severely pared down versions of the uh, the tracks that you found in the PC version. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, the, the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation versions of the game do not have the same soundtrack. They completely redid the soundtrack to make it more atmospheric. So you don't get the heavy metal influences and, and metal riffs that most people who are familiar with the game get. 
So if you didn't yeah, know that, go well, back and play those games. Yeah, and especially Doom 64, that's actually one that I want to revisit um, because I, I think I mentioned this in the last episode uh, briefly uh, where I was talking about getting that for Christmas one year and hating it. And I think that was the one time in my life where I was a really awful, like ungrateful child because I basically wanted my parents to return it like that day because I was so unimpressed with it at the time. Um, but I want to go back to it because it actually is a really unique take on doom. Like it's not, it's not even really a, a port of the original doom. It's, it's kind of a reimagining of it from the ground up. So I think I might have, uh, (laughs) <laughs> that might have been a missed opportunity. But what I do want to talk about with Doom is not so much the game myself, because, I mean, I, I wasn't in love with the game. Uh, I've played it recently. It's a fun game. You can tell it's more of a Twitch shooter for me. You, you run around. You have to kill enemies before they kill you. Get it quickly. Lots of ammo around. Difficult game. I even played on a lower difficulty. I'm still getting my ass kicked. It's a it's a hard game. But Are you, the, are you on I'm Too Young to Die, Chris? No, it's uh, uh, Don't Be Rough. I guess. <laughs> okay. Not too rough, I guess. I don't know. The, the second from the bottom. Like, the lowest one on the PlayStation version is I'm a Wimp. Oh, so they changed the names, too. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, Doom, the video game, for me, was more of a video game cultural revolution. It came out right with Mortal Kombat, right around the same time as Mortal Kombat did. The attitudes that people started thinking about violence and video games shifted drastically after Doom. It's not that... Doom was the first game to be violent. Um, it certainly wasn't the last game to be violent, but it probably, along with Mortal Kombat, was the most important game to be violent because it started setting up an industry that had mostly focused and catered to young children and started showing that more adult and mature audiences, I mean, you could debate how mature the content is all day, uh, but were interested in video gaming. So when with that being considered... I'm not sure what the video game industry today would be like without Doom. I'm sure that we eventually would have had the same game experiences and uh, broadening off. It's not because exclusively violence in video games is good. That's that's not my point. What it shows is that developers started to see they could start developing for more mature audiences, giving developers more of an avenue to create better experiences for all of their gamers and that's very very important it's also probably the most important first person shooter ever created and getting that genre off the deck because prior to it was wolfenstein 3d and i remember that just you know it was was cool because it had 3d environments but doom really took off the first person shooter as a genre and you know really was key to the success for what came right after doom in terms of quake and unreal tournament and how many people were able to pick up on that and, and its success as a developer, uh, later developing, of course, into the first person shooter craze that we've had pretty much for the past decade. So that's what Doom has been to me. Um, very important, culturally revolutionary video game, uh, in terms of genre, in terms of content and for the industry. So very important game cannot be dismissed. Fun game going back playing again. Um, but hasn't aged the best, but you can still play it. It's still completely playable. If you haven't done so, do so soon. How about you, Shane? I know this is going to go. You are going to gush, aren't you? (laughs) Don't act like you know me. (laughs) Okay, okay, maybe. Uh, But no, quickly, though, I wanted to touch on one point that you had just mentioned. Uh, Apart from, I think, catering to maybe a new, you know, segment of the market in that it's a a more mature title than perhaps uh, had been seen prior to, Mm -hmm. which is an excellent point. Uh, I think going along with that too is it was an unprecedented level of realism in video games for the time. Uh, I mean, you can go back and look at it now and you know, it's like, ah, these, Mm -hmm. this, these graphics, uh, they've aged and they certainly have. And I mean, to be fair, it's not like they were even fully 3d modeled. I mean, all of the, uh, you know, enemies and things like that are very well done. Um, but sprites, you know, right. so everything's still 2D. But at the time, that was amazing. And so that was also part of the concern around the whole violence thing was that, oh, well, this is this is so real. People could be using this as a, a training tool, which, you know, ironically enough, 
there actually were versions of the original Doom that were heavily modified for the military to use uh, to practice tactical scenarios. Not the so, smartest thing, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, uh, so I, I guess I could see where maybe the concern mm-hmm. came from. But luckily, you know, that's all very well, much unfounded. To, to further emphasize your point, I just want to go back because from understand, you know, there are some younger people who didn't grow up uh, during that time. You may listen to our show. The mm-hmm. graphics you see in Doom, when they came out, they were beyond what we could comprehend at the time. Um, it's It was such a jump from what we were used to seeing on a platform. The 3D graphics, that's why it was such a big deal when it came out on the Super Nintendo. Is It was a technical marvel that the Super Nintendo could do it. And these were coming from people who were blown away by the likes of Donkey Kong Country. Like... If you go back, you compare the games, you're just like, how are people seeing it this way? But this was technically amazing and beautiful and gorgeous to look at. And it, 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 like, if you go back and play the original one, it still doesn't hold a candle to the new modern versions of the original game, the 1080p classic Doom, not the re-release, not the modern Doom, but like the re-release of Doom, original Doom on like your Xbox 360, your Xbox One or PC, where you mm-hmm. can go and play it. It's hard to describe to people just how amazing and beautiful that game was when it came out back in 1993. Yeah, well, I mean, think of it this way. Even though there was a Super Nintendo port of it, so it was around that time when the SNES had, you know, sort of just come out. um, Take take the perspective of your average suburban parents, right? They their exposure to video games, presumably, probably, you know, was limited to seeing their kids play Mario brothers on a Nintendo or something like that. So think about the graphics that you're seeing on an NES and then you're a parent and that's really all, you know, and then all of a sudden this other thing comes bursting onto the scene and it's, you know, fully 3d environments, like realistic gun sound and action and blood and sound effects and everything. And that probably blew, blew their minds at the time. So if you need a comparison, I would, I would try to stick with that. But yeah, so for myself, uh, I, I didn't actually get in on doom, like right when it released. Um, I was a little bit late to the party, but that honestly is just because my family didn't get our first, um, family computer, uh, until a little bit later. I want to say it was somewhere around like 98, I believe. Um, and at the time it was, it might've been a little bit sooner because it came with windows 95 installed on it. It was a compact presario. Um, and fun fact, I think that one actually still had that stupid turbo button on it where you could hit it and it would give you slightly more Ram. So that's fun. Um, yeah, I know. Right. But, uh, that was my first experience with it. And I don't recall how I got it, but I do remember getting the shareware version of doom first. And I might have, I want to say I might've downloaded it from somewhere, but with dial up internet, that might not have been the case. I I think maybe a friend gave me a copy, which honestly, that's precisely what id software was hoping to accomplish. Um, you know, leveraging that sort of distribution model, because if you've got the first episode out of three in that game for free, uh, people can just pass it around however they want. And that's how you get the word out. And that's really the secret to their success at that time. But I think a friend gave it to me and, um, I played the first episode of doom a lot. And then I remember hitting that message at the end where it was just like, Hey, so, uh, if you're liking this, there's two other episodes and you can totally buy them. And of course I didn't cause I was a child and didn't have my own damn money. But, uh, I want to say probably a year or so later, my family, we went on, you know, a shopping trip as we normally do. And we went to a big box store. I want to say it was Sam's club, I think, or whatever the predecessor of that was. And, um, they had the retail version of doom for sale there, which included, uh, it's the same package that Chris was talking about on the PS one, more or less where it had, um, ultimate doom, Final Doom, uh, Doom 2, the master levels for Doom 2, which actually was just a collection of custom levels that were good enough that id Software kind of curated them from the folks that made them and packaged them into a, into a retail product. And I saw that there and ended up talking my parents into buying it for me because they knew I had been playing it before and I enjoyed it a lot. So 
technically that was actually my first like full copy of doom was was that that package retail deal but um yeah i have a i have a lot of fond memories of that one i've played through doom from start to finish more times than i think i can count and as i mentioned earlier in the episode it's it's one of the ones that i go back to um at least once a year if not more and thankfully uh that's actually on pc anyway that's super easy to do uh these days and still play it in a way that looks great today and that's thanks to the modability of the game so you can thank id software for that one um to have that sort of forethought but there are a myriad of mods and things like that that you can add to your base installation of Doom to kind of bring it up to speed. I myself have uh, an HD mod installed with it so I can play it in full 1080p uh, widescreen on my PC monitor. It's got all new high-res textures that replace a lot of the old ones. Unfortunately, the monster sprites are still the same because that's a little bit more difficult with the number of animations they had to do to get those to work. Um, which another fun fact, by the way, that I didn't mention in the history, uh, but those, uh, 2d sprites of all the monsters and enemies in doom, um, were actually modeled off of clay figures that they sculpted, um, to sort of get a more realistic look for them. Cause at the time, a lot of 2d sprites were just, you know, hand drawn without any real basis of anything, but right. they, they went through the trouble of making actual models, uh, which you can actually go out on the internet and find pictures of, and they're, they're pretty badass looking, but they um, should have put them in clay fighter. Yes. That would have been awesome. Cause clay fighter sucks. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it, Maybe. it was fun for the time. Not so much anymore, but for the time it was tolerable. I feel like I, I may actually want to, we may end up talking about that on an episode at some point because I actually had a, a, a somewhat significant amount of experience with the, uh, clay fighter on Nintendo 64. So I have a weird like nostalgia for that one, but, um, mm. but no, actually, yeah, like clay, clay doom models in that game would have been awesome. But, uh, but anyway, I, I digress. So, uh, so I have the HD textures installed. I got the high res. Um, I also installed an extra mod that replaces the original music with, uh, an actual band that did metal covers of all of the songs. Um, and they were very, very well done. Uh, so it kind of enhances the original experience. Um, but kind of, it still stays true to the, the original intention of the developers, um, which is awesome. So with those few tweaks, uh, it's almost like a, you know, a somewhat modern game and I can go back and play it whenever I want. And I usually do because it's awesome. It, it sounds like, like doom for you is like streets of rage two for me. It's just the game that you need to go back to every year and at least do one run through to make sure that you get your fix. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is, man. Like there aren't too many of those for me. I think it's that. And, um, funnily enough, the original Diablo, which we are definitely doing an episode on at some point. Cause I, I think we both, yeah, we both that. that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And, and also not to take up a lot of time on that one, but you, you can also find some modifications for the original Diablo too. So that, that helps. Um, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just get an itch like every once in a while. I'm just like, you know what I haven't done in a while doom and i'll just go pop it in and i might only play for you know hell i don't know 20 minutes or so but it's just enough to kind of get that fix again i will say that i've been trying to push the envelope and play on the harder difficulties and um so far i've actually been doing pretty well on ultra violence which is the second to highest difficulty nightmare is the hardest one and that is bananas to the point where they actually have a a warning when you select that where they're just like this difficulty level is like totally unfair are, are you sure and uh if you try it out it, it completely changes everything uh monsters have the ability to teleport at random anywhere they want um projectiles are faster like the the imps uh throw fireballs at about twice the speed that they normally do um there's more enemies and they're much more aggressive. Uh, I was only able to get about halfway through the second level of the game before I got turned into paste on nightmare. If that's any indication, mm. but, uh, but yeah, man, I got a lo lot of love for it. Um, and I'm glad that, you know, I can still play it to this day. Um, so I know that you have a, I guess a somewhat limited experience with it. Um, 
but if you had to pick out one aspect or or uh, one experience with Doom that really sticks out for you as kind of like your highlight, what what do you think that would be? Uh, I would say for me, and it's not so much Doom, it's more Doom 2. And I think it's just because I equate Doom 2 so much with Doom. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to... I, in middle school, I go over to a friend's house like all the time, even well into high school, and they had Doom Two on their computer. And being able to have those death matches locally with Doom Two on the computer uh, was probably my favorite aspect of it. You know, looking back, I still don't, I don't think Doom's multiplayer is as good as everyone remembers it. Um, <laughs> well, I think that's I, again, that's like one of those things yeah. where it had been unprecedented at the time. Right. It was it was a groundbreaker. It was a, a pioneer in the terms of multiplayer. Uh, first person shooters, of course, because mm-hmm. it was amongst the first of the first person shooters. But you know, it doesn't hold like a candle to even Goldeneye nowadays, in my opinion. But just getting after it, uh, and playing it then, and never really going through the game, but just playing it then and playing with other people, I think was a big deal. And that's, that's probably the best aspect of it. I also like the frenetic gameplay. I didn't think it was that frenetic, especially in today's modern, uh, first person shooters where everything is so calculated. Everything is so planned out how you have to aim. And I mean, some people can play it really fast, right? But there's more, it's not as fast, frenetic, and Twitch game like as Doom was. And I think going back and playing it on the PlayStation, I'm like, wow, this is a faster game than I had ever thought it was ever going to be. Because in my mind, I'm thinking Wolfenstein 3D, I'm thinking slow, I'm thinking just kind of plodding through, or maybe I'm thinking of the Super Nintendo version. But no, Doom is a fast game, man. It's a tough, fast, frenetic game. Uh, that will has a lot of Twitch gaming characteristics to it, and that can't be understated, especially if you've never played it before. You think you're going back in time and playing a slow first-person shooter? Nah, man. That's one hard, fast game, and uh, it's tough. It definitely it, it its teeth are just gritted, uh, grinded out for a classic gaming experience with a classic difficulty. Oh, yeah. Hey, fun fact, by the way, on that uh, whole speed thing, uh, <laughs> you're, you're saying that it's like, it's really fast comparatively, which, which it is. But when I went back and played this again, um, a couple of days ago, kind of just getting prepped for this episode, I, um, I started from scratch again and I was like, man, this, this feels slow. Why does this feel slow? And then I, uh, I went in and changed a, a toggle option to where you can just turn on running all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh man. That makes such a difference. That's going to be my, that's my personal recommendation. All right. If you, I actually, I don't even care if you've played it before, or if you haven't either way, if you go back and play the original doom, um, make sure that you are just running all the time. Now, to be fair, I don't know if the base installation of doom gives you the option to turn on like auto run all the time that I, I'd, I'd have to double check because this might've been an option that was included in the mods that I have installed on mine. And if that's the case, that's a bummer. But then I might recommend that you go and install those mods anyway. Uh, but yeah, having run on all the time completely changes the experience. It ratchets that speed up to like 11. Um, it, t- it takes a game that was already pretty frenetic uh, and just bumps that up to a whole new level. So I, I would recommend that. Also, uh, start on at least Hurt Me Plenty, which is like the mid midway difficulty. Uh, and the reason I say that is because they're actually are less monsters in every level if you play it on an easier difficulty. So if you want that like crazy, you know, frenetic gameplay, then at least start there. Um, but I would challenge you to go just straight to ultra violent because that's where you're going to have the maximum number of enemies in every level and it gets pretty bananas. So what's your, what's your favorite aspect then? I mean, you, I mean, you've gushed over this. Uh, I kind of gave my, my personal favorite aspect on my limited experience. So you are the Doom Master, and that's not an S&M name. That is uh, just an opinion. <laughs> that's but, my that's my new internet handle, um, okay. Triple X Doom Master uh, 420 Headshot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right with the Xbox crowd. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. My favorite aspect, that's a tough one because I like everything. <laughs> But, uh, I like doom. That's my favorite aspect about Yes, doom. My doom. favorite aspect is that it exists. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I guess if I had to pick one thing, it, it, it really is just the gameplay, man. Um, I, I would say the combination of the gameplay and the atmosphere, uh, I, I really like, I mean, especially at the time it was sort of a unique thing to have this fusion of, uh, you know, space age, futuristic technology, 
but also just straight up hell demons, uh, and done in such, you know, a, a creative way as well. Um, so I think the combination of the two is really what gets me because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm into, you know, horror movies and that kind of thing. And, and the funny thing is, is the inspirations that these guys had going into the game, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the Evil Dead series, Aliens, things like that. And of course their love of heavy metal music. I mean, if I was their age and in their spot at that time, that basically would have been me. Like if I was a, a game developer, like I would have liked to have think that I probably would have wanted to make something like doom. So this thing kind of speaks to me on just about every personal level. <laughs> well, look at John Romero, man, that you could tell that guy was a metalhead. Oh yeah. He has, he has luxurious locks, luxurious locks. Yeah. I mean, John Carmack, not so much. I think yeah. he did back then, back then he did not today. It's, you know, he's, he's kind of you know, hair deprived, but yeah, John well, Romero, yeah, he, he, he pulled a, an early nineties Metallica and chopped it all off. Well, I think it fell out. <laughs> Could also be that. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. I am. That's fair. <laughs> but so I guess the other thing that we usually talk about is um, whether we think it holds up today or not. And I am going to say we can probably abbreviate that portion because it sounds to me like by and large, it's a resounding yes. At least it is on my behalf. I think this is something you anybody could still go back to and get some enjoyment out of today. And that's only enhanced by some of the very uh, easily obtainable and installable mods that you can throw in on the PC version. But um, do you agree with that or do you have some, some hesitations? I would say, yes, my hesitations would be on the versions that you play. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. of course play the PC version or play the Xbox 360 version or play it in a way that you can play it in HD, you know, uh, modern graphics, modern capabilities, uh, stay away from like the Saturn port, the 32X port, the 3DO port. If you hate yourself, the Super Nintendo port, <laughs> um, the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation ports aren't bad games, but they're not the full experience. You're not going to get the best version of Doom. So does it hold up? Yes. Uh, even my kid's been playing Doom on the PlayStation. He's, he's 10 and he's having a great time with it. So. It does hold up when a 10 year old can play it and enjoy it and have a great time with it. And it was created in a time that's not even his, then yeah. I can say the game holds up and that's not even the best version of the game. So 100% yes. Awesome. I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out. You, you've made, you've made a doom fan, not me, but you've made a doom fan. Oh, who your son? Yeah. Awesome. Well, you know what? If, if I can, if I can reach at least one person, I feel like I've done my job. Yeah, well, now he's gonna, he's probably gonna shoot up his school because you played Doom. Ah, that's... see, now you had to go and ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. That's a joke. It's been scientifically proven that that doesn't have any effect on people. The one person who listens to us, we're going to offend. Yeah. Like, well, thanks, everybody. This was our last episode because we're going to get pulled down now. How dare you? <laughs> the outrage. <laughs> Uh, well, awesome, man. I think, uh, I think we had a pretty good discussion and I think, uh, it looks like about time we should probably be wrapping this party up. So, yeah. um, by the way, quick correction from the last episode, uh, when I was talking about ways to get in touch with us, uh, to be fair, it had been a while and I misstated what our email address is. I had said that it was contact at retrohangover.com. It is not. So, on the off chance someone sent a message uh, in that direction, it went nowhere. So congratulations. Uh, if you would like to reach us out to us via email, it actually is podcast at retrohangover.com. Uh, and outside of that, there is, of course, the usual channels. You can reach us on our Facebook page, uh, on Twitter at retrohangover. Uh, you can also go directly to the site, which is, of course, just retrohangover.com. Uh, and if you have any, you know, comments or suggestions for things that you'd like us to talk about or corrections, um, uh, things that we totally screwed up and you feel the need to tell us about it, um, those would be the places to do it. Uh, we are also on YouTube. So like, comment, subscribe and make <laughs> sure right. to, to hit the bell and do all the things for the yeah, YouTubes. You, you smash the button and uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, all that. But yeah, actually, you're right. Um, I just set up a YouTube channel for us. So you can find us. Just search for Retro Hangover Podcast. 
And I uh, will be uploading these uh, episodes to our YouTube channel in case, for whatever reason, you prefer to listen to your audio via YouTube, then you can do that as well. Uh, and we will probably also be doing some Twitch streaming uh, sooner rather than later. I have our account all set up now. And if I uh, have some time, I'd actually like to get in there and stream some Doom gameplay. Um, uh, specifically what I want to do is an Iron Man challenge. So I want to start from the beginning of the game on ultra violent difficulty and see how far I can get without dying. I think that'll be fun. So, uh, keep an eye out shortest, for that. Shortest Twitch stream ever. <laughs> no, that's nightmare mode. That's like five minutes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, if we do end up going live, then, uh, we will make sure that all of our social channels are uh duly notified all right i think that was a good episode shane that is uh episode 21 um once again pay attention in the future it looks like i'll be doing another spot for nintendo seconds uh that's at lp tiger uh one of our friends here so keep an eye open for that um because i might be doing that again and make sure that you register and go out to vote because it's your civic duty so vote that's right in the meantime happy gaming everybody uh, love your joysticks.